The announced savings plans in that the governor's budget are a positive step if they prove to be true. We still haven't seen any details yet that would help verify these claims. We're concerned that the governor still hasn't addressed the critical needs to enact structural reforms that we propose to reduce pensions and health benefits over the long run to sustainable levels. We propose platinum and gold health benefits reforms that could save New Jersey half a billion dollars annually. Unless we enact platinum to gold reforms by 2022, we'll be hit with a massive 40% federal Cadillac tax on our already expensive health care benefits, which could cost $100 million. Platinum and gold reforms are supported, supported by both Republicans and by Democrats in the legislature. They should be easy to accomplish if the governor would get on board. Just doing that one reform would preclude the need for tax increases proposed by Governor Murphy today. We're concerned that Governor Murphy's income tax proposal is extremely dangerous. We believe that the governor's income tax proposal will drive the continued outmigration from New Jersey. Governor Cuomo recently echoed these sentiments, saying that this type of income tax increase would be the worst thing to do because those impacted can so easily leave. When you look at other states, whether they be Republican governors or Democratic governors over time, Virginia or in Massachusetts, there is no change in the income tax level. That predictability means people will continue to invest, whether you're a family or whether you're a business going forward. We're at risk of becoming overly reliant on less than 20,000 tax filers who pay about 16% of all income tax revenue and nearly 10% of total tax revenues. Uh, this budget um, and the tax increases, we need to make sure we constrain spending. Uh, that's an important first priority, to make sure this is an affordable state for all of our families. This was a speech about the budget. Unfortunately, this governor forgot to speak to the taxpayers. Who he was speaking to were special interests. If he was speaking to the taxpayers, what he would have spoken about was capping state spending, just like we cap local spending. If Governor Murphy was talking to taxpayers, he would not have raised income taxes. If Governor Murphy was talking to the average taxpayer, he would have told them that he was raising the cost of government again in a state that's already unaffordable. unaffordable. In addition, in the past two years, he's raised state spending by 11 percent. What household in the state of New Jersey raises its spending by over 10 percent? This is a governor who's out of touch with the taxpayer and in touch with special interests. If we don't start to address the real budget problems in this state, we're going to continue down a road that makes this state more unaffordable. I can tell you this, that in the future, this party, this Republican Party, is going to stand up and say no to more taxes, say no to more spending, and try to talk to the taxpayer directly. And my commitment to the taxpayer in this state, there won't be any votes for new taxes in this state. This is the wrong time in the wrong state to put a greater burden on the taxpayers. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. The first thing that comes out of, to the top of my mind is, is it real? Is it real? The policies from this year, we now have about, somewhere people have estimated about 800 million short in revenue. So how are we gonna close this year on June 30th? And then everybody's cautiously, say, glad to see an, an 800 million or a billion dollar Cost savings, is it real? How much still has to be negotiated? Um, if, you take, if you take a look at it, I was a proud member of the Path to Progress, the co-chair on that Path to Progress. If it's real, and if those savings are, are true, small steps that the Republicans have talked about for many years, you've already heard from our two leaders, a few steps on that Path to Progress just taken from platinum to a few steps to get into gold, there'd be no need 
for any tax increases. None whatsoever. So my issue, as we go through the whole process now, the legislature will take a look. We'll be scratching, which right now we just heard was the surface. And we'll be digging in to see, is it real? And what we need to do, and we could have easily made a number of significant, of small changes that no tax increases at all would be necessary. So thank you, uh, Senate Budget Officer. One thing I can say about Governor Murphy is he's consistent. Sure. With his campaign pledge, pre pledges to raise taxes and inc increase spending in New Jersey, he certainly has lived up to that bill every year since he's been in office with these two budgets. Um, we are looking at a $1.2 billion increase. So the thing I can say about this budget, it's not as bad as last year, but it's still bad. It's going to raise taxes on a segment of our population that are very mobile people and can move. People that pay around $90,000 a year in state income taxes now are going to get hit with yet another increase, 18,000 of them. It's awful, awful hard to risk the temptation not to go to Pennsylvania where you're going to pay 3.07%. If you look back to the McGreevy, Cody, Corzine era, there was about an $11, $12 billion increase in spending across those eight years. In the past, in this year and last year, as it stands now with the governor's proposed budget, it's about $3.9 billion in increases in two years. If you do that times four, it's almost $16 billion if we were to project out over the next seven years, including this year. That's far, that'll eclipse the record for increase in spending. And the reality is, ask a question. Okay, last year we raised $1.5 billion in taxes. This year is over $500 million, but the four, four, $449 billion that's going to be hitting people who make a million dollars and one buck is going to raise the $449 million. Ask another question. Where are we going to go next year? If this trend continues, it's going to be like last time, where they raised over 120-some taxes and fees throughout an eight-year period. We're on the same bad movie, same deja vu, all over again situation. It just seems ridiculous that we cannot find a way to properly forecast revenues. We look at the way they forecast the revenues for last year into this year. January, we're about six, seven hundred million dollars short, or maybe eight hundred million. We need a better way to project revenues. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of guesswork. If we come short a half a billion halfway through the budget year, we could end up with a billion or a billion and a half dollar hole in, the, in, the, in that current fiscal year budget, which would be a calamity like it was back in 09. This is not the way to properly plan. We need to be taking looks at health care benefit reforms and also pension reforms and many other structural things that we do in the state of New Jersey. And the last thing I'm going to talk about if we can't afford the house we're living in, if I can't make my mortgage payment where I live, I'm not going to put an addition on that house. I'm going to pull in my horns and pay for the things that I have and I need to pay for now. We add more programs, $100 million between pre-K and more free community college. These are great. Sounds like great programs. But we should have that $100 million going into the school funding formula, which is only $200 million this year. Last year it was $350. We could have been at $300 million for the K-12 schools where we should be putting our money and investing our money to help property taxpayers in the state of New Jersey. So we've got a lot of work to do between now and July 1, folks, and we're ready for the fight. Uh, look, guys, bottom line here is that even if the governor's what seem to be overly rosy proj projections uh, in revenues and spending are true, we are only a fraction of the way to where we need to be in order to end up with a balanced budget. The, all the rhetoric aside, the bottom line is everybody who's done the math, every responsible economist on both sides of the aisle, uh, legislators on both sides of the aisle that have done the math, uh, rating agencies who we mentioned today who have done the math say, without comprehensive, substantive, serious pension and health benefits reforms, New Jersey will become insolvent. I don't care the rhetoric about we we're technically don't have a way to declare bankruptcy. Failing to pay your bills means you're insolvent. It may as well be uh, bankruptcy. We need to face that reality. And the governor's abdication of his responsib responsibility to lead us to fiscal responsibility uh, is, is at the very least a damn shame. Um, the governor's uh, revenue on, on tax 
uh, increases is also destructive, whether the policy is enacted or not. People are avoiding New Jersey. Uh, Warren Buffett just the other day warned corporations to avoid states like New Jersey with huge unfunded liabilities, multi-hundreds of, of billions of dollars of unfunded liabilities who don't have a plan and leadership in order to solve them. That means that we will lose jobs here, we will lose growth, we will lose, the middle class will lose uh, ultimately. The governor's rhetoric and his philosophy on uh, taxes uh, seems to be like a line out of what you'd expect from a Dr. Seuss movie. Uh, if some is bad, more must be better. Uh, we saw last year, we enacted uh, a, a tax on the wealthy uh, that the governor said would raise more money. What have we seen? We have seen a reduction in particularly that category of revenues, a dramatic one, uh, that it seems today we're kicking the can down the road, at least until April tax collections. I hope for the people of New Jersey that I'm wrong uh, and that they rebound, but uh, I fear that I am right. Uh, two other quick things. The governor's suggestion that our reform of these tax breaks and tax incentives is going to substantially alter our budget is garbage, quite frankly. Uh, and it's, it's irresponsible to suggest that it is substantive when it is not. We need to do all we can to spend every dollar and every tax break and ensure we get every dollar back on such breaks. But the suggestion we might get $11 billion, even over 11 years, uh, is patently false. I hope it's simply a lack of understanding on the governor's part rather than a purposeful uh, miscommunication. Um, the last thing that I want to say is uh, the biggest accomplishment that the governor outlined and mentioned in his speech today was some of the lowest property tax increases in, in New Jersey's history. Uh, I respect the governor very much, but in the first year of any governor's uh, tenure, uh, they, they tend to take all the credit for anything good at, that happens and place the blame for anything bad that happens onto the guy before them. The truth is, both things can be laid at the foot uh, of previous governors. Certainly the success with property taxes, we need to give a big hearty thank you to the previous governor for that and the policies uh, that Republicans in the legislature pushed and, and helped force our friends on the other side of the aisle to enact. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.